Hey, good afternoon. Um, the last video that I put up was in the response to a comment that I got saying, um, do you think you can recreate the Deftones guitar tone with my budget pedal setup that I've made a couple of videos on now, but I've made a, a, a pedal board out of like super budget pedals that I really like and I really have a lot of fun with and it does a really good new metal tone, which is the kind of tone that I'm, I'm into. Um, and I'll, I'll link it in whatever corner it comes up in, but I'll link it up the top. Uh, I managed to make the Around the Fur album only using one pedal, that pedal being the Boss Metal Zone. Um, because it does that tone really well. Like that's, it nails that tone. That's what it does really well. And on that video, I got another comment from Deathblow who said, do you think you can be able to, uh, uh, create Slipknot's self-titled guitar tone with your pedal setup? I don't know, <laughs> but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> I've been playing around with it for a couple of hours and I think, I mean, I, again, I don't go exact. I go close enough. <laughs> if, you know, I'm going uh, guitar, budget pedal set up into a 20 year old knackered practice amp, like a really beat up old Marshall. So if I can get that kind of close enough tone, I'm happy with it. Okay, so here's the pedal board. Again, made up of Really, really budget pedals. I'll quickly go through it again. Um, signal chain goes tuner up here, nothing special, just a, a standard little, you know, LCD tuner. Then that goes into the pitch shifter. Um, I've tried the pitch shifter in various places, but I quite like it here. Um, then into the tantrum. Now this is what we're gonna be using today. And the reason I'm using the tantrum and not the metal zone is even though the tantrum is kind of a clone of the metal zone, um, it also has a boost in it. Now, the settings on the front, you see it's got F, 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 F. That stands for follow the leader. Um, this is my corn pedal. So I set this up for my corn tone when I use the seven string. Um, follow the leader and also Korn's first and I believe second album as well were produced by a guy called Ross Robinson. Now Ross Robinson also produced that first Slipknot album. Um, so I figured, why not start with the corn tone? The problem with Ross Robinson produced albums is that for whatever reason, he mixes them super weird. So with the corn album, um, he, the, the bass, Fieldy's bass is like a, also almost like a percussive instrument. So that gets pushed forward in the mix. Now for that first Slipknot album, for some reason, the rhythm section is right at the front. So the drums and the bass are pushed all the way to the front of the mix. And then it's the vocals and the samples. And then behind them, you have the guitars. So it's really, really, really hard to identify the guitar tone itself. Plus there are two guitarists with two different guitar tones. It's really, really hard to identify. However, occasionally in a couple of songs, the whole band will cut out. And when the whole band cuts out, you have sort of like a lead riff uh, or, or a sort of like filler riff. And that filler riff is usually either vocals, a sample or guitars. So there's a couple of songs where the guitars do that sort of like little filler riff when the whole band cuts out. And that's what I used to try and find the guitar tone. It's actually really, really similar to my corn tone. The only thing I had to do was add a little bit more distortion. So the little bit of distortion there. Um, I keep the boost on and I keep the, obviously I keep the pedal on, but I keep the boost on because there's no sort of solos or sort of any kind of things where you would need a boost. What I do is I turn that on and use it for pinched harmonics because this thing loves pinched harmonics. So there's a couple of songs um, where, like in uh, Spit It Out, there's almost like a pinched harmonic uh, verse riff. So I always leave the boost on for corn and I'm gonna do the same here. I'm just gonna leave the boost on for the Slipknot tone as well. The thing that I did really need to change was the graphic EQ. So normally it's a little bit more dipped. I've scooped all the mids because again, new metal. So the mids are scooped, but it's almost in like a tick shape rather than sort of like a standard scoop shape. And then again, on the side here, this is 
what I use for my volume. So I set everything and then I use that as my volume control. Um, so yeah, it's more of a, it's more of a tick sort of symbol. Um, I don't, I, for this, I'm not using the Doom pedal because there's no real sort of fuzz on there, but I am going to be using the Wonderland. Now the Wonderland is easily the best money I've ever spent. It is fantastic. And it's, um, essentially a reverb panel, uh, a reverb pedal with overtones. Uh, but I've turned those off, so I'm only using the reverb, and I'll use that for the intro to surfacing, as well as this pitch shifter. So the pitch shifter, the wet is up full, and the dry signal is muted. So all we've got is the pedal. We've got no original guitar tone. We are up one octave, and you can see, look, pitch up one octave, because this does pitch, uh, pitch up, pitch down and then a detune in the middle. But we're gonna go pitch up, fully wet signal, no dry signal, one octave up. And again, that's for the intro of surfacing. The noise gate you can kind of take or leave. There's no real sort of like, I said leave it off on the Around the Fur album because there's a lot of hum and buzz on the album anyway. But this, there's a sort of, uh, uh, Mick Thompson and I, I don't think it was Jim Root on that first album, but whoever it was, very, 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 like way more technical than Stephen Carpenter. And there's a lot of like palm muting and, and, and sort of like staccato riffing. So if you want to keep the noise gate on, keep the noise gate on. I'm going to keep it on for this just because that's kind of like the mix of sound I've got. And then the rest of it, this is just a switch pedal that I modified. It's nothing special. It's just a switch pedal and the metal zone is going to be off. So again, I'm trying to get that sort of like Ross Robinson sound out, use corn as a bass, build on top of it, and then change the EQ. All of these pedals are way, way better than their price would lead you to believe. Like these, the graphic EQ is, you know, insane money. The Wonderland and the Tantrum, absolutely incredible value for money. I'm a huge fan of K-Line products anyway. I love K-Line pedals, like absolutely love K-Line pedals. And their price would lead you to believe they're not very good. Absolutely incorrect. They are amazing pedals. So yeah, let's hear a few riffs with just this basic setup in this. We can see these settings here. I've had to tweak it a little bit, but only really the distortion. Oh, and the volume. I increased the volume a little bit as well. Boost on and the EQ, which is set thus. And then the reverb pedal, zero shimmer, a little bit of decay, and then just a little bit of the the um, the reverb as well. You don't want it too much. And the pitch shifter, all wet, no dry, one octave up, pitched up. All right, let's hear how it sounds. Slipknot, uh, for most of this album, used drop B tuning. Now, drop B tuning is... I, I am looking this up because I do not remember, is B uh, on the thickest string, the top string. So B, F sharp, B, E, G sharp, C sharp. So very, very, very common in sort of like mid 2000s. Like if the mid 2000s had a national anthem, it would be in drop B because it was really, really, really common. So currently this is in drop B. Um, I have 11 gauge strings on here at the minute. If I was going to set this up for a drop B guitar, I would pr I would either pick 11s or maybe, I don't know if I would go 12s, but I might do the hybrid strings where you have slightly thicker on the top and then slightly thinner on the bottom. Um, but yeah, so I've got a set of 11s on here. It's a bit, a bit twangy, but it is what it is. I'm not changing the strings. <laughs> In addition to those pedals, the thing I'm running into it is an Ibanez 520QM, uh, I think it is. Um, I love this guitar. This is easily my favorite guitar of all time. I absolutely adore this thing. It's not the best guitar in the world. It's definitely not the most expensive guitar in the world, but sometimes you just have something that you gravitate towards and I gravitate towards this. I love this thing. Now remember, because this is being recorded on a phone microphone, and then being compressed onto YouTube, and then you're probably listening to it out of your phone speaker, what I am hearing in the room and what you're hearing, not the same thing <laughs> at all. But in the room, it sounds pretty close. And sometimes, and again, like I said in my last video, you could be in the room with me in here and go, that's not, 
it doesn't matter. It's close enough. <laughs> and I'm happy with that, with budget pedals. All right, cool, let's have a look. Okay, so just like last time, the pedals are set, the amp's on, all we've got on at the minute is the Tantrum, the EQ and the noise gate, that's it. Um, guitar is in drop B, we are ready to go. So I'm gonna start out with possibly my favorite riff, like still my favorite riff that they've ever done, but um, nice and simple. It's so, so, so simple, so cool. Um, with the boost on, on the tantrum, what I like to do is just get a little bit, like not full pinched harmonics, but just a little bit for that, that sort of like um, first riff. So go. You don't want too much, so it's like, it, you don't want full pinch, like you sort of kind of want it just before. Something like that. So that's why I keep the boost on for little bits and pieces like that. So just to reiterate, a pedal board full of budget pedals, uh, an almost in tune guitar, and a practice amp that is 20 years old and is on its last legs. Like that thing is, it really needs to be put out to pasture. And again, all of those things combined, I think I got pretty close. Like again, it's not perfect, but for what it costs, I think it's pretty close and for like home use and bedroom playing and, and you know, whatever for, for just standard room level playing, I think that sounds pretty good. So yeah, uh, I hope that goes some way to help. Um, again, with a, a tantrum and an EQ, you can get a really, really, really cool new metal tone. So yeah, I hope that helped. Thanks for the question. Peace.